Hey guys, it's Nicole and Eden, and we are here to finally spill all the secrets about the concrete in our van. Let's get into it. The number one question that we got asked about our van was what is this concrete product? Does it work good? Does it hold up? So we decided to make a full tutorial video of how we actually did the concrete and a full review now that it's been in the van for a while. Before we get into the tutorial, we used a product called Smartcrete. We will link the product in the description for you guys. Smartcrete is a type of micro cement. Micro cement is not regular cement. It's actually not really cement at all. It is almost like a spackle that has a concrete finish to it. So it doesn't have the properties of concrete that you would normally expect, like the weight and the inability to flex, things like that. So micro cement is actually a very, very thin layer that you can apply onto whatever substrate you're using, whether it's wood or anything like that. It is actually very flexible. So it flexes with panels. We'll show you panels that we put micro cement on and flexed it a ton and there were no cracks. It's obviously much more lightweight than actual concrete yeah. because it's so thin. It's also waterproof and it just looks beautiful. Yeah, especially in a van. It's a small space and it's just such a clean aesthetic because it's, it's relatively plain looking, but it still has that dimension in it. So in a van, it just looks absolutely amazing. We had a lot of concern putting something like this into a van because it hadn't been done very much. Only a few people we've seen online that have actually done it, but we decided to take the risk. We did a ton of research and decided to go with Smartcrete in the end. And we're going to share with you guys not only how we put it on, but also how it held up. And our honest review of the product. So we're going to now get into a tutorial of the product from start to finish. Smartcrete sells um, do-it-yourself packages, um, and that's exactly what we used for our van. I was the one who was really set on this aesthetic um, and kind of convinced Edin to take the risk in doing a concrete van, so it was my responsibility to concrete, which Edin definitely ended up having to help me. A lot. <laughs> So I did a full tutorial and we're gonna get into that now and then right after will be a review. Okay, so we're in our half converted van and it's day one of concreting our benches and floors. So before you start anything, you definitely wanna change into clothes that you do not care about. As you can see, I have concrete all over myself. These have been through the wash. It does not come off of your clothes. So change into clothes that you do not care about for this whole process. Be very aware of the temperature that you're gonna be applying this product in. If you're in a house, you're fine. Just keep it room temperature. But if you're doing it in a van like us, um, you really wanna make sure you're like above 60 degrees. Um, when it's cold, it's gonna take a lot longer to dry and the drying times are already really long. Um, so you can be waiting like 10 hours for something to dry if it's cold out. We recommend putting a space heater in your van or if your heater is already installed, just cranking that up so that your drying times are as they say they will be. If it's hot out, know that the product will be harder to work with. It'll dry as you're doing it. So also be mindful that if it's very hot out, try and get it in the AC if you can. Last thing on temperature is if it's raining and it's super humid, that's also gonna affect the drying times. So I know that most of it is like six hours of drying times for the concrete, but depending on the weather, that really could change and you really wanna give it enough time um, to dry before you do the next layer. So be really mindful of that. Get a pair of latex gloves, not the super thin ones. These are like the durable ones. They're a little bit thicker. You're gonna want these because a lot of the stuff that gets on your hands, it will come off with water. All of the Smartcrete products will come off with water, warm water, um, but sometimes it's a little bit hard and this just protects your hands, makes things easier. And the last thing before we start talking about the products is proper protection for your lungs. So I really recommend getting one of these. It's a respirator. When you're sanding, absolutely have one of these. Um, it's super fine dust and you do not want that stuff in your lungs. The first thing in this process is to prepare your substrate layer. And this is a really important part of the process because if your substrate, um, like two joints like this, your wall and your floor, they're not actually connected. Um, they need to be solidly one piece because if there's any you know flex between those pieces your concrete will crack the only way that this product cracks it's super flexible it's great it's really durable but it will crack if your substrate below it cracks um, so they actually give you this smart jointer 
This works for, you know, cracks that are two millimeters and smaller, so something like this. You could fill that in here. But if your cracks are bigger than that, for example, these pocket holes are pretty deep, I recommend buying wood filler. This stuff has a hardening property in it that makes it really, really tough and really, you know, attaches to that surface and is flush. Um, so I recommend getting this stuff. So for this video, we're gonna be using the countertop and back wall as our example. The first step is filling those joints. So that includes screw holes, joints between the countertop and the backsplash wall. Any place that there's a crack, you're filling it. And you're gonna choose between the smart creek joiner for very small cracks and the wood filler bondo for larger cracks. So now we're gonna do the joiner. I recommend getting a plastic disposable spackle. It gets pretty destroyed and you don't wanna you know, destroy the one that they gave you with the package because um, you're gonna need that for the concrete. So in some spots, it's gonna be a lot easier to just put your finger in the jointer and use the glove as your tool because to get in there with a tool would be really hard and it actually leaves a really smooth edge with the glove. With Bondo, definitely wear a mask and you have about five minutes of work time. I will say that when you fill the joints, to do it with a heavy hand because you can sand it down after. We've filled all of the joints and screw holes and connection points um, with the joiner and the Bondo. So the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is tape off using either the Smartcrete tape or the blue painter's tape um, every single edge where you don't want the concrete to go onto. For every single layer of the concrete, you have to re-tape because you have to take off the tape while the concrete's still wet. So this is your first time taping, get used to it. You're gonna be doing it five more times. Now is also a good time to cover everything that you don't want the primer and concrete to get on. So floors, even stuff that you think it's not gonna get on, cover it because it will get on it. So make sure you do a really good job doing that and you're gonna keep that for the whole process. So now we're gonna sand with uh, 220 grit sandpaper, make everything nice and smooth. This is definitely a trust the process, process with all of it. So it's not supposed to look pretty until the end and don't freak out during the process, just trust it. <laughs> Now that the surface is prepped, we are gonna prime it. They sell two different primers. One is for porous surfaces and one is for non-porous surfaces. Because this is wood, we're gonna be using the um, porous surface, basically meaning that it absorbs. Um, if you have tile or metal, you're gonna be using the um, non-porous primer. Make sure you get the right one because they sell two different kits. For this stuff, definitely use a glove. It's very sticky. And I would say out of all the um, products, this is this one's the hardest to get off your hands. So use a glove for this one. They do give uh, just two rollers with the kit, one for the primer and one for the varnish at the end. So if you're doing multiple different projects, you can just save it in a Ziploc bag and it stays completely wet. So you don't have to keep buying them. And just roll some onto the brush. You don't want to apply this too thin because you really do want it to leave a nice gritty surface for the cement to grab onto. The easiest way to apply it is with a roller and for hard to reach spots, these foam sponge brushes are great. So after you've put on the primer, it says to wait um, 30 minutes. But when we contacted SmartCrete, they said actually between two to three hours. And then the next thing is you need to apply the first layer of cement within 24 hours of putting this on. The tape with the primer is a little tricky because it kind of hardens, so your tape might get a little bit stuck. Um, I just used an X-Acto knife to get it out, so you do need to take the tape off after the primer and re-tape for your base layer. Now the first step of the cement. You're gonna be doing two coats of Smart Base. You'll use a metal trowel, and I recommend also getting a smaller metal trowel for corners and hard to reach spots. And definitely work from top to bottom because as you work, it's definitely gonna be dripping down. When you open it, definitely give it a mix. The drier stuff is at the bottom, so you wanna mix that all to be one consistent texture. So it should look something like this. For vertical surfaces, if you cut out a piece of cardboard, it's really nice to be able to catch what falls because 
it really does drip as you're going. You sit right back up. You want it to be thick enough where you don't really see the layer, the substrate, but you don't want it to be puddling um, or very thick because this is one of four layers. It's been six hours since we did the first layer. Make sure you give it at least six hours. Depending on the temperature outside, you might need a little bit more, a little bit less. Should be completely dry to the touch. Okay, the next step is to sand this down with 40 grit sandpaper. And they give you this little hand thing to stick it onto, and it comes off really easy if you have any texture or bumps. If you're working with edges, be really careful with this because it'll just completely take it off. So be super gentle. If you're having trouble sanding corners um, or little hard to reach spots, I recommend either cutting the sandpaper to a 90 degrees and also you can pick up a Dremel. This is really helpful for this whole process um, if you're working with corners and little edges that you can't reach. Okay, now that everything is sanded and retaped off, it's time for the second base layer and you're gonna apply it the exact same way that you did the first. When you're working, try to keep this covered because it does dry out and it stays a lot better if it's just covered and you take a scoop once in a while. So after we've applied the second layer of base, you let it cure again for at least six hours till it's completely dry. Then I sanded it with 40 grit sandpaper again and then retaped the surfaces so that I can apply the next step. The next step is to apply two coats of Liso. This one is a little bit thinner um, than the base layer and it's honestly a little bit easier to work with and you really wanna put on a very, very thin layer. A few things about applying the Liso is you really want to make sure that there's no air bubbles because then when you sand, they kind of like flake off. So really make sure that when you're doing it, there's no little air bubbles underneath. And also this is the colored one of whatever color that you've picked. The base layer is a bit darker. This actually dries the color that we chose. Sometimes you're gonna get these weird black ink spots. The best thing to do when this happens is just scrape them out and then cover them with more Liso. So after the Liso has dried for six hours, you're now gonna sand with 220 grit sandpaper. I definitely recommend wearing a mask for this. The dust when you sand with the sandpaper and with the Liso is super, super fine and probably really not great for your lungs, so wear your mask. After you've sanded, you're gonna wanna wipe down the surface so there's no dust on it, and because it's super fine, I recommend getting these tack cloths. It's just a cloth that's with beeswax and it really picks up all of the fine dust so that your surface is fully clean before you do the next layer. Now for the last coat, you're doing your second coat of Liso, same exact thing as the first coat. And with this one, try and get it relatively smooth because it's the last coat. And don't forget to retape all the edges before you start. So 
the second layer of Liso has dried for six hours. We went ahead and sanded it with 220 grit sandpaper. And now we're ready to do the last step, which is putting the varnish on to protect the concrete. The varnish makes it completely waterproof and then scratch proof. And you're gonna be put putting three coats on. If you're using the matte varnish, you really wanna mix it because the part that makes it matte gets stuck at the bottom. So mix it really good before you pour it out. Also, they say to put it on with a roller, but if you're dealing with edges, a paint brush, or one of these foam brushes, it'd be much easier. For the varnish to do the three coats, you're putting it all on in one day. It is a two to three hour drying time in between coats, and between the first and second coat, you um, sand with 400 grit sandpaper. Between the second and third coat, you do not need to sand. If you want the area to be very waterproof and scratch resistant, they recommend four coats instead of three. So for our countertops and our floors we're, and bathroom, we will be doing four coats of the varnish. Before you start the first coat of varnish, make sure that you really clean the surface from the dust because it'll get kind of cloudy and stuck in the varnish if you don't clean it well enough. After the first coat of varnish has dried for two to three hours, you're gonna come back in and sand with 400 sandpaper. Um, you're only sanding in between coats one and two of the varnish. And after you sand, you'll wipe down again and then do the same process and put another coat of varnish on. Congratulations, you're all done. Okay guys, that was the tutorial. I know it was a lot, but this product is a lot of work, <laughs> but the results speak for themselves. So I think yeah. it's definitely worth it. Yeah, I mean, maybe we would have done less of the van in concrete knowing how much work sure. it would have been, but the, the material itself when it's finished just looks so good. And we're so happy we did it in the whole van, even though it was a ton of work. Like it probably doubled the time of how, how long it took to build the van. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> because there's so many factors to this product, we decided the best way to review it would be to split it up into different categories. The categories that we decided are aesthetics, durability, waterproofing, ease of use, price, and flexibility in cracking. We're gonna be rating each of these categories a number out of 10 and just try and give things that we figured out along the way. Okay, first off is aesthetics. This is the reason that we chose this product. And the results speak for themselves. I mean, you can just see it looks so unique. It really looks like concrete. And it's just a look that you never thought you would be able to achieve inside of a van or any flexible, moving, uh, vibrating space. And Microcement makes that possible. We will link the exact color that we used. Um, I want to say it was A1. Okay, A1, and it knows exactly which one it was. But they do have a range of colors, so you can change the color. They're all relatively neutral. Um, and you can also change the finish. So we went with a matte finish. Um, they do also have a satin finish as well. Also, the final look is really going to depend on how you apply the product. As you saw in the tutorial, um, every stroke and every sanding had an effect on the end result. In the beginning, we were going a little bit too hard with the spackle and it was um, very textured. By the end, we were getting better at it and it looked a little bit more smooth. So there is a learning curve there to get it to look exactly how you want it to look. Yeah, and you can also play with it a bit if you want it to look more um, three-dimensional. Then you're gonna go thinner with those Liso coats and you can go a little extra hard with the sanding to get, kind of show, have the base coat show through. Um, it is very adjustable to your liking. I will say though that the actual texture of the wall is completely smooth, but if you have like corners and nooks like we did, um, you are gonna be spending a lot of time getting those to be smooth because it's pretty hard to do it with the spackles. If you're okay with having some lines and texture and roughness, then you're totally fine. 
the reason why we chose this product was aesthetics and we are not disappointed. If I could give it an 11 out of 10, I give it an 11 out of 10. But it's gonna get a 10 out of 10. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> The next category is durability, and here also the SmartCrete shines pretty bright. We put our test piece of micro cement through hell, and it honestly held up amazing. I hit it literally with a hammer over and over again. Nothing happened, didn't crack, anything like that. Uh, the only time I was able to get it to um, crack a little bit was when I hit it with a sledgehammer. A metal sledgehammer. A metal, a metal sledgehammer, and then I was able to get like marks in it. It still didn't crack, but it made, it made yeah. marks into it. So in terms of durability, this also did really, really good. Also, over time, while we were in the van, we didn't get any real scuff marks, even on the floors when we were walking in and out in the sand, or you know, sand and dirt on our feet. Dragging gear along the floor. Dragging gear. It was honestly totally fine. It didn't scratch ever. Um, but we made one, well, I made, I made one little mistake. I was cooking in the van and I took a pot that had hot water in it, but it was already poured out, but the pot was still hot. I didn't put it on anything to protect it from the counter and I put it straight onto the counter. It was sitting there for quite a while. And when I lifted the pot, there was a nice half circle ring. Um, I was pretty bummed about it. I felt really bad, but um, it was something that I just didn't think about that it was not necessarily heat proof. Normally with countertops, you should be putting something underneath your pots anyways. Yeah, so lesson learned, this product is not heat proof. You cannot put hot hands and hot things on it. It will burn it. But not like a coffee cup or something. That's totally fine. We're talking like hot metal straight onto it. Yeah, so for durability, we're gonna give this product an eight out of 10. Next category, waterproof. This was also a big reason why we went with SmartCrete because we wanted our walls and floors and bathroom to all be the same product. So the product had to be waterproof. We learned a lot in this category. <laughs> yeah. When we did our test panel, we poured water on it and at first the water just dribbled off um, and you didn't see any stains. But if you let water cool after like five, maybe 10 minutes, you'd start to see that it was almost seeping into the panel and getting like watermark darker spots. Now we spoke to uh, SmartCrete directly to try and solve this problem. They had first told us put more layers of the finishing varnish and we did this, but we didn't see the results that we wanted to see because we still had staining. And we were just nervous because in the bathroom, like even though the shower pan is on a tilt, the water's still gonna collect on the bottom a bit in the corners. Uh, just like any shower would. Yeah, we didn't want to have stains all over the walls. And when I mean stains, I don't mean actual stains. When it dries fully, those spots uh, disappear. They don't stay there. It's just when it's actually still wet. But we weren't satisfied enough with that, so we ended up reaching out to SmartCrete again uh, to find a different solution. And they ended up recommending us a different finishing varnish to put on top that will make it completely 100% waterproof. Once we got that varnish, which we'll also include in the description, it worked really, really great. Yeah. And we no longer had any staining or anything like that. We put it all over the bathroom and the countertops and the floor, and we no longer had a problem with waterproofing. But it was a bit of a journey to get there. And that product is not included in the kit that you get. So you might have to ask for it. Additionally, um, it is actually part of their like industrial line. So I'm not exactly sure if that was a special case that they did give us that product or not, um, but it will be linked for you to ask for it if you would like it. Our final score for waterproofing would be a seven out of 10 with the regular varnish that comes with the kit, and then a 10 out of 10 if you do get your hands on that extra varnish. Get the varnish. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> Ease of use. It's not easy to use. <laughs> Especially if you're building on like, you know, a short timeline, this product might not be for you. It takes a lot of time. As you saw in the tutorial, there's many steps, a lot of hours that go into each step, especially in a van, because it's not a flat wall. You're working with corners and angles, and it definitely takes a little bit to get the hang of the actual concrete motion and how to use these products but you are going to figure out what works for you and how you like it just through trying and experimenting i highly recommend having at least one test piece to practice on before you start working on the actual pieces going into your van if you can do this in a um, covered space 
That is very important. If you're working outside, what's gonna happen is all the concrete is drying, pollen, dust, leaves, things are gonna fall into it and they'd stain it a little bit. Try to be in a closed space. So we recommend, first of all, if you can, micro cementing these uh, your pieces outside of the van if possible that's gonna eliminate a lot of the hassle yeah we had a lot of things that we had to do one already inside the van and that made it very very difficult but the panels that we did micro cement outside on a workbench they were much easier to work with also really really important to make sure you're doing it in the correct temperatures we were doing it in too cold of an environment and the layers were just not drying correctly and it took a ton of time in between each layer for it to dry so make sure you're in a closed space with a heater or in a temperate climate where you're not gonna have those issues. You cannot put the next layer on until you're you know, rock solid dry where you can sand that layer down. One really good thing about these products is that they come pre-mixed. They are ready to go kits to use, which means you do not need to do the math or the mixing to get these products ready to put in your van. And that saves so much hassle when using a cement or micro cement product. One really great thing about this product is that you could put it on any substrate. You could put it on wood, metal, plastic, tile, whatever it may be, you can put this product on it. You just need to know if it's an absorbent surface or a non-absorbent surface. And the only thing that changes is the first layer that you put on. After that, you can put it on anything. Last tip about the ease of use, we recommend doing this on smaller portions of your van. We did it on our entire van. It yeah. was definitely too much, but if we were to do this in just a certain project, let's say our countertops or just our floor or maybe just our wall panels, it would have been a lot more manageable. But the fact that we did it on the entire van was just too much for us. So for ease of use, we're gonna score a four out of 10. Now let's talk price. The price of this product is going to be a quite a big expense if you're gonna do it in a lot of your van. We ended up spending a total of $2,700 on this product, which was a ton. I remember showing Ed in the product and being like, yeah, yeah, uh, just don't look how much it is. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is pricey, but a lot of that price is shipping. The actual shipping itself was $1,000 out of that $2,700, plus a couple hundred dollars of customs taxes that we had to pay because it was imported from Spain. Smartcrete is based in Spain. You have to ship it to the States and you have to pay customs on that shipment. That price was also with a 20% discount that they had at the time. So this is not cheap, but if you're doing it on a smaller piece of your van and you want a product that's already been tested in a van, it might be worth it. There are other suppliers for micro cement. You can find it um, in the States, but from my research, the reason why we went with this product was that it had been done in a van before and I had asked them how it held up and they said, great. So I wanted the peace of mind that this product was already tested in a van rather than kind of figuring it out a year down the line. But if you're watching this and you've used a different micro cement in your van, please let us know. We'd love to know how other ones <laughs> held up in your van. One good thing is that they do have some really great promotions sometimes. Just this last January, they had a 50% off sale, which already made the prices really manageable. So keep an eye out, maybe wait for a sweet spot when they're having a promotion and you might score a good deal. If you're following them on any social media, they kind of blast when they have a promotion. So you'll see it if you're following them. The amount that we ordered was 350 square feet worth, which because they're in Europe, you have to give them square meters. So that was 32 square meters. And that meant we had to buy four of their kits. Each one of their kits covers eight square meters. The amount that we ordered ended up not really being enough. We had enough of the base layer, but we actually ended up running out of the Liso. I guess we were putting it too thick in the beginning. And uh, we just got to a point where we ran out of Liso and needed to order more from them, which was more shipping and more money, but we needed it to finish the job. Lesson learned, the Liso is a really, really thin layer. It does not need to be thick at all. Your first layer, you should absolutely see the base coat through it. And the second layer, you'll see that it builds just enough to have a little bit of dimension. So for price, this is gonna score a five out of 10. And again, that's mostly because of the high shipping costs. Now for the category everybody has been waiting for, flexibility and cracking. How does this product actually hold up in a van? Great. <laughs> ish. <laughs> Great ish. And we'll explain why. When done correctly, 
This thing will never crack. Where it was applied correctly, we didn't have a single crack the entire time and we went on a bunch of off-road, off-roading and washboard roads and anything you can imagine and no cracking to be found in anything. When applied incorrectly, which we completely take responsibility for the mistakes that we made and learned along the way, and I am strictly talking about right now, seams between two panels. When you do not fill those seams the correct way, over time, you will get a hairline fracture. You can cover it with a trim piece, which we did in a few places. You're not getting cracking throughout a wall, like on a piece of wood, you're not gonna get any cracking. But wall panels that are next to each other, countertop to wall panel in that corner, if you're putting the concrete between the two, you could get cracking if you do not fill the seam the right way. The only reason that all this happened is because we were trying to cover seams. We were trying to make everything look like one solid piece of concrete. And that's where all the complication came, trying to cover the seams. The way that they tell you to fill seams, we misunderstood. So when they refer to a seam, they're referring to if you're putting this product on top of tile. So tiles with grout in between. They're already connected and very strong. They're referring to not vans. <laughs> not things that move and flex and two separate pieces that are moving independently of one another. They're referring to a crack in the wall or a crack in the floor, and you can fill it with a filler. But in our case of using it in a moving vehicle where everything is flexing, you cannot have two individual pieces of wood that are moving independently. In between those two pieces, you're going to get a crack. Our goal was to have our floor and our benches look flush, like they were one. Um, if we just did it a lot simpler where we did each panel individually and just had a clean seam with, with maybe a trim piece totally fine but we overcomplicated it and just tried to go the extra mile don't try to cover your seams and if you are going to try and cover your seams and make it look like one solid piece you have to fiberglass between the seams you have to make it so strong that these two individual pieces are no longer individual that it becomes one solid piece and there's not going to be any flex in between them. And where we saw the success with that method was our bathroom. Edin built a custom slot sink and actually covered it in epoxy. It was all different little pieces of wood, but because it was covered in epoxy and then the micro cement on top, we didn't have any cracking, as well as our shower pan. Um, the edges were fiberglass and then the micro cement on top, no cracking there whatsoever. Honestly, if you are gonna use this product in your bathroom, don't use it on the floor and the shower pan. Get a shower pan. It's just gonna save you a lot of like headache and you're gonna have a much better peace of mind that you have no leaks, no cracking whatsoever. Use it on the walls. You're not even gonna notice that it's not on the floor. We ended up actually really liking these like outdoor decking panels to put on the floor. So we didn't even end up seeing it on the floor. It'll make your life a lot easier if you just use it on the walls of your shower. Overall, it did really, really great when we weren't trying to be complicated. In the parts that were just full pieces of wood, zero cracking whatsoever. So overall for flexibility and cracking, we're gonna give this product an eight out of 10. So our final thoughts, honestly, this product is breathtaking. We will be using it again. Um, we will just be learning from our mistakes and using it in a little bit less places and being a little bit smarter and not trying to overcomplicate things. Um, but this is definitely, we're going to see this in the van space more and more. Even our van came out like what, six months ago and we've seen countless vans with this concrete look. Yes. Um, it's definitely going to be in style, in trend. I think you should hop on the van wagon. <laughs> if you have the budget and if you have the time and the energy for it, it will look incredible. That's the end of the story. If you do end up using this product, we would love to see what you guys did. Go ahead and shoot us a message, show us what you've done. Or if you have questions throughout the process, we probably know the answer. So you can just DM us and we wish we had someone to ask those questions while we were using it. So we'd be happy to answer. The easiest way to get to us is through Instagram. And that's Nicole and Eden. We'll link it here as well. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to our channel. It helps support us through everything we're doing. Yep. Something exciting that we created was a design workshop. We go very in depth on how to design your van. Um, if you feel overwhelmed by that, I think what we put together is very helpful for a new builder or even a builder that just wants to take their vans to the next level. 
And if you need help beyond that, we also offer consulting. Anything you guys want to know through the process of your van, we can help you and be there to support you during your journey. We did that a ton during our build and it was the most useful thing in the world. So now we are doing it back to others and trying to help people because we know how hard it can get. And if you need help with the actual building part itself, there's a great resource called Van Life Academy. We're gonna link that as well here. And that is what we use to learn almost all the basics of everything there is in a van build from electrical to woodworking to systems to insulation. It's just a ton of courses from different van builders that teach you the basics of how to do everything. That was our basis of knowledge when we built our first van. If you have any questions, throw it in the comments and we will make sure to get to it. Thanks guys. Bye. Toodaloo. <laughs>